Welcome to Melbourne. Hi, my name is Gus, or Angus. I'm a member of the Melbourne Scottish Fiddle Club and soon I'll be heading off to Shetland for the Fiddle Frenzy Festival. But first, I need to pick up a fiddle. This is the first year of the Shetland Exchange and we're really thrilled that Bill Sides has decided to sponsor it and we're really thrilled that Gus Downing is going to be our first exchangee because he just has a real love of that music in his blood. I was very interested in um, supporting cultural thing. I've been very interested in um, music uh, all my life. Uh, I did learn the violin but I was never any good at it but I've always had music around me and uh, I've really liked it. And some years ago now when the fiddle club uh, basically shall we say discovered John Anderson, discovered my <laughs> grandfather's violins and mounted a concert um, it was very, very clear then that um, they were very, very interested in supporting the, the Scottish way. The Melbourne Scottish Fiddle Club, it's something that I really wanted to do when I came back from Boston, where I'd been playing the Boston Scottish Fiddle Club, which was a fantastic organisation, and I really loved it. It kind of combined my interest in Celtic music, my love of playing fiddle, and I knew, because I was a violin teacher originally, I knew I could teach people. And um, I really wanted to play that same kind of music. So I just passed a fly around at the Celtic Festival and got about 15 people. And then it just really grew by itself. People liked it. They told their friends. Um, kids came, brought their mothers. Kids came, brought their brothers. Um, and we had mothers came, brought their daughters. So it just kind of grew from there. And we've probably had about 200 people through the club all up. Mm -hmm. And we've done some fantastic things. And I guess the whole point of it was really to build a group of people who could play the repertoire and could play it in sessions and have fun together. About five or six years ago, when the Scottish Fiddle Club discovered my grandfather's violins, Judy, I think, was called over to my aunt's place to play one of my grandfather's violins. And I think she was a little bit dubious about it at the time, you know, mm, what's this going to be like? But um, anyway, it was my aunt's 80th birthday. She went over there and um, she played the violin and I think she rather liked it because she said, was there any more of them around? My aunt said, oh yeah, it disappeared out the back room and there was quite a few more out there. <laughs> and um, as I have it, Judy then asked her, well, um, how do I, is there any more of these violins around? And um, my aunt said, oh, you need to talk to Bill Sides about that. So almost immediately, um, Judy rang me, said, I understand you know something about John Anderson violins. The Shetland thing really for, for our club has grown from an interest that I had, an interest that also Verona Burgess had. Verona put quite a bit of time into the club maybe 10 years ago and uh, Verona was a teacher in the Shetlands actually with Tammy Anderson so there's a real strong connection there and there's a lot of people in Melbourne who we know have real Shetland connections but we hadn't met Bill Sides until the time when I got a phone call please come and play the fiddle I've got this fiddle made by a family member it's in a cupboard it's somebody's birthday and we thought oh well whatever we will and then we encountered this fantastic family and they're just so friendly and so welcoming and they're so inspired by what their grandfather did. And, um, and Bill was just really enthusiastic about gathering together all these fiddles that his mm. grandfather had made. John Anderson was my maternal grandfather. He um, was born in the Shetlands and uh, he came out to Australia when he was very young 
and uh, like many Shetlanders, he had a uh, he loved fiddles. He was also the other side of Shetlanders. He was a herring fisherman, and uh, so when he wasn't fishing for herrings, I guess he was making violins. And um, he uh, he made we believe five in the Shetlands, um, and then he came out to Australia. He had met his wife to be in the Shetlands. She had come out to Australia a little while before and she was actually a, a nurse down at Frankston. And um, so anyway, I think it was 10 days after he arrived in Australia, he married her and um, he started working in the railways, which then was a very prestigious job. But it meant a lot of travel because he was what you would call a ganger. And uh, so he was moved around uh, various parts of, of Victoria, it was all in Victoria. And uh, as near as we can tell, he was making violins in some horrendous uh, conditions. And Bill was just really enthusiastic about gathering together all these fiddles that his mm. grandfather had made. And he, he knew where some were, but he certainly didn't know where they all were. And so he did some research with the family and he managed to get, I don't know, 20 or 25 fiddles together and we got one of our players, Jim Vizard, who's a really quite a good um, luthier, he fixed them all up mm. and, and a lot of them were in really good shape but some of them weren't and so there was work to be done on them and Jim thoroughly enjoyed doing that and he wrote up a little bit about each fiddle and, and then we played them at a concert and that was such a moving experience because all of the Bill sides and his family and his aunties and his mm. kids and the Anderson descendants were sitting I think in the front row by memory, but certainly near the front, and tears were streaming down their faces mm. when we were playing the Shetland tunes, and it was such a beautiful thing to be able to do. And that concert actually was all focused on Scottish music in Australia, so it was really appropriate. So it's, it's kind of grown from there, and the friendship with, um, with Bill and Diane is a really strong one, and we know it's going to continue, and, and they're going to get a lot of benefit out of having our visitors here from Shetland, and we're going to get a huge benefit out of sending our players to Shetland, so it's it's just a lovely thing to be able to do. Can you tell me about that fiddle? This um, fiddle, Gus, is a quite, an, quite interesting one for me. I learned to play on this violin, but it's actually my mother's violin, and it was one that my grandfather gave to her when she was very young, I think about 10 years of age or thereabouts, and she learned to play on it. She was actually a very accomplished player. It is actually number 10 and it was built in 1931. It's still in very good condition. Mm. It's had a lot of use, a lot of hard use. And um, at the uh, at the uh, fiddle concert, um, it's the one that uh, Judy grabbed. So maybe, oh, <laughs> maybe that says something, I don't know. But uh, it certainly has got a very nice sound and um, it uh, has been well uh, thought of by anybody who's ever touched it. Um, there are several other violins around that are very, very similar age to this and they all sound very, very similar. Um, I think uh, some people said that they're sort of a melodic or a classical type of sound, mm. whereas some of his later violins tended to be more folky, more strident, uh, perhaps a little louder. Mm -hmm. um, he experimented a lot with woods and that's possibly got a lot to do with it. Um, but anyway, this one, Gus, We'd, um, we'd like you to take this one right. to the Shetlands and um, look after it and make, yeah. it, <laughs> make it talk and uh, just show the Shetlands what one of their, um, the, well, one of their folk uh, has done in Australia. Yeah. Um, it's going to be an honour. Well, thank you very much. Um, then I'll take good care of it and thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Excellent. Arriving in, in Lerwick, Olerick, in about the, the 6th of, of August and um, I'll be there until about the 16th so um, yeah if you see me walking around the streets of Lowick or Larrick uh, come and say hi my name's Angus or Gus um, yeah looking forward to meeting everybody over there